Hey guys, Lexi Gavin here, and today we are going to talk about how to study poker. So the game of poker is constantly evolving. The pros are getting better every single day, and in general, the game is just getting tougher every single day. So it's really, really important to keep a structured study schedule. Make sure you're studying roughly between 50% of the time and playing 50% of the time, and just making sure to slowly over time, try and plug as many leaks as you can possibly plug in your game. So let's jump right into the presentation here and talk about how to go about studying poker. So I'm gonna list for you uh, a few techniques that I use. If you're playing online, you should be using a hand tracking system and going back and studying every hand that you've played. Now, I know this seems tedious and a lot of work, but really there aren't that many hands in a session that you're playing for big pots. So if you have a hand tracking system, you can go and filter it by amount one, and then you can go and study all of your um, hands that you've played a significant pot in. So you can go about it doing that way. I like to even study my pre-flop mistakes and um, so just to make sure that I'm not, you know, I don't have any leaks in my preflop game. So I'll study hands that I've even uh, folded preflop in. If you, you know, find that that's overwhelming, you can just start with the big hands and then slowly um, going into those um, tedious little preflop spots. So that's one way to go about studying. Another way is when you're not in a hand, so when you're playing at a table, a live table or online, you should be observing everything that's going on in the hand, even if you're not in it. So what I like to do is I like to watch, I like to try and make reads on my opponents when I'm uh, just sitting back. And I like to try and put people on ranges. This is a really, really good effective tool to, to use that'll help you get re better at reading hands and reading your opponents. So when you're paying attention, when you're on your phone and not paying attention, you're missing out on uh, reads from your opponents. You're missing out on showdowns that you should be taking note of. You're missing, you know, sometimes people will show their cards if they made a big bluff. And if you're in your phone or not paying attention, then you're going to miss on those spots. And those spots add up. That They can really help increase your win rate if you are watching all of the action at the table. So I know it's hard and I know it's easy to get distracted in poker, but what, try and you know do, use that as an exercise. When you're not in the hand, you should be trying to range your opponents. So again, it's just a really effective method to try and help you uh, learn how to hand read and make reads on your opponents. So pay attention to every hand. Another way to study, of course, is hire a coach. Um, you know, you can join training sites and that's great, but there's really something about having one-on-one -on -one coaching and having a coach watch your hand histories. Uh, that'll really help um, improve your game. So there are a bunch of different poker coaches out there with different rates, and um, we have a lot of them here to choose from. So definitely consider hiring a coach. I know it's pricey, but you have to consider the money that you're investing in poker as tuition. So another really good way to study is by joining a poker group chat and running hand histories by your friends. Um, I find that this is a really helpful way to bounce ideas off of your friends and people that are better than you. By far, I think the best, the thing that improved my game the most was talking hand histories with players that are better than me. Um, you have to kind of put your ego aside and not be afraid to, even if you feel embarrassed, um, not be afraid to ask that question um, to your friends. Like I have been playing poker professionally for 12 years and I still get confused and I still, I'm in a poker group chat and my friends are sending me even pre-flop hand spots that they're confused about. So there's nothing to be embarrassed about. All the pros get confused. Um, so definitely consider joining um, a group chat. I, if you don't have friends in poker, there's forums you can use, uh, like two plus two. So really try and uh, get involved in the community. And so if you have a hand that you're confused about, you know, run it by friends and see what they have to say. Also, when you're at the table, if you're playing live, you should be writing down your hand histories that you're confused about 
and then run it by your friends or your coach or review them yourself off the felt. And when you're playing tournaments, you always want to double check your bust out hands. Just go back and review the hand that you busted out in and make sure that it was in a good spot and see if there was something else you can do better. So I've created a four step study plan for you to follow when you're going about studying poker. Step one, pick your topic. So you're gonna write down all of the different topics of poker you need help with, and then you're gonna pick one of those topics and try and delegate one week to studying that one area. Okay, so step one, pick your topic. Step two, learn your topic. So you're gonna be studying and researching your topic all week. You wanna learn everything you possibly can. You know, you wanna watch videos, ask your friends about certain spots, uh, review those spots in the hands you play, uh, read books on this topic, uh, blogs, post in poker forums like two plus two. So try and research and learn as much as you can about that topic. So step three, record everything that you've learned about that topic. Get a notebook and start writing down the important points you learned on that topic. And when you're playing poker, write down the hands you played relating to that topic and review them later. And then step four, simple, rinse and repeat. So you're just gonna repeat this process with a new topic every week. If you're dedicating one topic per week and really studying and honing in on that one spot, then you're gonna become an expert in that topic and you're gonna feel really comfortable moving on to that next topic because you've spent a week learning it, right? And if, you ha if you're confused about what topics you should be learning, um, you should write down every, every aspect of poker that you feel like your game needs help with. You know, for me, um, I had a lot of trouble in uh, blind versus blind spots. So I spent like a week or two just studying that one topic and then moving on to another. So I've created a study map for you. Uh, these are just topics that I recommend you starting with in the order that I recommend. So at first, you want to nail down your fundamentals. So these are your raise for sin ranges, pot odds, bankroll management, stack to pot ratio, etc. So those fundamental concepts, you should have an understanding of each one of those before you move on to pre-flop play. Which brings me to the next area of focus, have a strong understanding of your pre-flop play. So you should know exactly which hands you should be opening and which hands you should be folding. Like your raise first in ranges should be so automatic to you that you don't want to spend brain power thinking about it. They should just, you should just know and it should just be automatic. So you should know exactly which hands to open in which positions, which hands you should be folding, uh, and so on and so forth. You also want to play around with the odds and equities but we'll get into that a little bit later. I'll show you some equity calculators and other tools you can use, but you definitely wanna have an idea of the odds and equities in poker before moving on to more, more advanced concepts. Okay, so once you're confident in your fundamentals and pre-flop play, you wanna start working on your flop strategy. This includes things like hand classes. I don't know if you've watched my course on continuation betting, but I, I talk about hand classes in there. Um, that's just grouping the different types of hands together and having an idea of which hands you should be checking and which hands you should be betting in certain situations. So continuation bet strategy, calling C bets, uh, range advantage. So these are all things that you should be studying after you've nailed down the fundamentals. Um, so definitely start working on these. Um, once you've nailed down these concepts, start working on your three bet game. So you wanna study which hands to three bet pre-flop and which hands to call three bets with. So once you feel comfortable on your flop strategy, we can now start moving into turn strategy. So you also wanna think in terms of hand class on the turn as well. Uh, you wanna learn which hands should be checks and which hands should be turn C bets, which hands you should maybe start delay C betting. So now that you're confident in your turn strategy, we're gonna move on to river play. So you need to understand when you should be bluffing rivers, when your draw's bricked, when you should be value betting rivers, when you should be calling rivers, uh, when you should be bluff catching on rivers. So you're, you really wanna focus on every different scenario that can happen on the river and feel confident. So now that you understand the fundamentals and have a basic understanding of pre-flop, flop, turn, and river strategy, 
Uh, you can start working on more advanced concepts like check raising, implied odds, blockers, blind versus blind play, draw play strategy. Those things you should be studying individually. So learn uh, what are implied odds, what are, you know, some learn what your check raising strategy should be and really focus on that each week. So you'll also want to have a basic understanding at first, at least, um, of various poker softwares. There's a whole bunch of them. And I know uh, solvers and stuff, uh, you know, can be really intimidating, but there are plenty of training videos out there that will walk you through how to use them. So just some examples of some softwares you can use are equity calculators like Poker Cruncher and Equilab, hand tracking programs like Poker Tracker, um, and just a tip for anybody playing online, um, there's a program called Table Ninja that if, so if you are going to multi-table, Table Ninja is a program where you can use your keyboard to help make your decisions faster. So, uh, when I had it set up, I would have my space bar, um, fold for me. I'd have the alt button, uh, raised to three times the big blind. So it's just a way to, um, make your life a little bit easier and get your bets out there faster. And then there's solvers like Pio Solver, Munker, uh, that you want to um, have an understanding how to use. So I wanna show you guys an example of a um, equity calculator. When I first started playing poker, I would just play around with these a lot. There's this, there's Poker Cruncher and some others. So I would just uh, choose some hands and let's say let's take Ace King for an example and I would enter it there and then take the next hand, say I had a hand like pocket nines, and I would run the equities just to give me an, an idea of my equity versus people's hands uh, or people's ranges. And it's just a good way to, uh, it seems tedious, but it's a good uh, way to practice knowing your equity in certain situations. So let's take nine, 10 of diamonds, uh, put it up against six, five suited. Let's evaluate that. So nine, 10 of diamonds has 62% equity roughly uh, versus um, six, five suited. So play around with this. You can also do this versus uh, ranges. So let's take, um, say you have a hand like uh, pocket tens, right? Say you open uh, in the cutoff and the small blind um, goes all in for 20 big blinds, right? So let's, uh, so we're entering our hand pocket tens and then we're gonna do um, hand range selection and we're gonna think about what hands our opponent is gonna be shoving in the small blind when we open versus um, uh, when, when they have a 20 big blind stack. So let's say this is roughly the range that they're gonna be shoving when we open. I'm doing this fast, I might be missing some stuff. So maybe every pair, um, maybe not deuces. Uh, so roughly this seems about right, maybe shoving king, queen. This seems a little bit loose, um, but close. So you wanna hit apply and then evaluate. And then you can see that pocket tens has roughly 60% equity versus the range that we think the small blind is shoving, right? With 20 big blinds. So play around with this. If I know, you know, like I said, solvers, solvers are intimidating, but if you can at least get a poker equity calculator and start playing around with this, this is a really good way to study and get better at poker. So I guess I just want to say poker is an extremely complicated game. The pros are getting better every single day. And you really, if you want to be successful in poker, you have to study and have to work on your game consistently. Um, poker is also about volume. So the more volume you, you put in, the better off you're going to be. Um, you know, you it helps balance out the variance, the more you play. And if you are studying and putting a lot of work in your game, it will pay off. So just keep it up and um, yeah, just enjoy the ride too. You know, don't look at studying as uh, something annoying that you have to do, but an exciting, ooh, I get to learn new methods and strategies and, you know, test them out at the table. Always, and that's another thing, when whatever you learn, it's really hard to, when you're in game, like try and apply what you've learned 
in every spot, but you really have to work on that. So you could study 100% off the table. And then when you're playing, uh, you, you know, if it, it's not going to benefit you if you're not applying what you've learned when you're in game. So really try and work on that. Um, you know, like that's why the one week per topic thing works really well because you can really focus on those spots and say to yourself when you're playing for that week, okay, if you're studying small blind play, you're really going to pay attention to every hand that you're playing in the small blind. Um, watch all of the hands that your opponents are playing from the small blind and um, you know slowly over time you're gonna cover all the topics and you're gonna feel really confident in your game. So that wraps up today's presentation on uh, how to study poker. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any questions uh, feel free to get at me at Lexi Gavin Poker on Twitter and Instagram. So have a nice day and good luck in your games. Bye.